The Outlands, Book 6. I imagine that's who I am. The headache melts, and I'm thinking in the woods I could find a bed brighter than mine. You know there's another one of those dying in the kitchen, right? I'm sorry the garden swallowed the light. On that dark December night, I know how hard it can be to find your way home. I'll kick you under the table. You can watch me leave. I'll see you another night when there is no vast garden between us. We move bars, but the conversation stays the same. I should have loved a thunderbug or cigarette instead. I broke another glass in your town. Do you still see the pieces when you walk around, bringing up something from the nothing you had found? I carved a note on the table for you, hoping someone else might break through like our initials in the tree by the creek, struck by lightning to forever in bed. I should have loved a thunderbug, or smoked a bowl instead. Frozen in some lost October, you and I understand each other, from the sheets to the shower, frozen and on fire. I, as a concept, no concept we desire. You and I are to the grave, gravel on a sad Sunday afternoon, no one else knows but you. I was always a weight to carry, light still from a far away window. I am rolling through the wet grass. Maybe your mother can repair my jacket. You and I will be in it forever, whatever it turns out to be. Can you turn out the light before I reason against kissing you in the street? From the shower to the sheets, we understand. I palm my nose to catch the blood, still using Maddie's blanket after taking it from her garden. A lifetime ago, I drink and walk into the woods, all of the memories fixed in place. Private, I trespass, drink it to forget, I forget to think it through. I palm my nose to catch the blood before it ruins the carpet. My ears are still tuned to the radio tower frequency, waiting for our song to be played. There is never any loss, despite what you might think. Just an absence that will soon be filled. A lifetime ago, I walked through someone else's garden, waterlogged and somehow flooded by sunlight filtering through the trees. I think it might have been hands of summer or spring torment, anyhow. I bathe in the light that ignites me, never sadness, just absence. Can I finally be free of the past? When memory is all that lasts, can I scratch the itch I have had for years? I palm my nose to catch the blood. Maddie, I'm using your blanket, I hope you won't mind. When your father came outside to confront whoever had broke into his shed, he came face to face with me and I, in a moment of panic, forgot to explain why he can't have them anymore. Maddie, forgive me, I meant no harm. The blankets I borrowed will stem the blood flowing into my palm. 1. I like having to ask the woods permission to come in, hollow as the skin, deep as the lake. I am always between two states of being. And who are you to dip your cup into this jade water? I have been running from your sister ever since I found this place so deep within the woods. At the second half of the breach, a shimmering pink portal, all torn and stained with grass. I like having to ask the woods permission to speak. Hollow as the dent I left in your hip, deep as the surface. I am always one foot in the breach, and one hand through, just out of reach. And who are you to dip your cup into this jade water, and turn to me with the eyes of a waster blowing another speaker? In a house on a faraway street, behind the fence where the cool kids meet, I sit and listen to the silence, and wait for the woods to hear me. Two. In the shade of the ocean tree, I throw the six-pack into the grass. You bend and dip your cup into the water. The sun's last light smooths your hair behind your ear. I sit and listen. Another shadow grows across the meadow, but the entrance to that hidden city lies out of reach, at the other side of the other side of an impossible-to-find breach. You turn to me and say, I imagine that's who I am. 
and dip one finger in the water. I would drink if I could, but I am no longer anybody's daughter. No fathers chasing me down dim streets, while pink light escapes a second floor window, and laughter cuts me like a knife. We left that in a life long behind. And in the shadow of the ocean tree, I throw the six pack into the grass. You turn to me and pull the tape off your wound, the sun's last light dancing delicately on your side. Holding myself the way another might, cowering in the ruins, I see a deer pause beneath the trees in the only clearing I can see, and turn to me the colour of some ambient flower yet to be discovered. I wish for all my words to end with a school of fish through the air above me. Could they find the fear within and shake me free, or take me away? I'm holding myself the way another might see me and think I was some loser, deep in the ruins, far away from the garden and the locked gate. Those flowers that died started life as a seed crushed in a hand. I have been there before too. I was crushed in a hand and begged for life. I see a deer pause beneath the leaves. Above me light cuts clean through the trees. I have seen the second door, though I do not know where it leads. In the summer heat, sweating on my single bed, shaking slightly at the loss, so monumental and hard to understand. I spoke softly and truthfully. Can I ask any more of myself? I tried to escape from your window, but I hit the grass too hard. I tried to find my way through your garden, but the gate beside the fence was locked. I speak to brambles, and they say, there won't be a fossil of me to find in any green field. Only what still remains a memory. In the summer heat, Singing in the trees and crossing the river, holding all I own above my head, shaking slightly at the thought of dying in a lonely place, wearing clothes I cannot trace. I am drinking deep and in the kindest way, asking no more of myself. I tried to escape through the back passage, but the leaves had grown to push me back, cleared but not cleared, a lake but not a lake. I hit the ground and taste blood, the gate beside the fence locked tight, singing to someone out of sight, to the trees and the cider gum, telling myself over and over that death is to become.